This is just a short little video to tell you why you want to come to the Building in Nearpod session. The Building in Nearpod session is for teachers who already understand Nearpod and don't really need that beginner course again. The purpose of this session is to show you some of the features that are underutilized in Nearpod and then put you in the room with other teachers that teach the same subject as you or same grade level and then allow you to um, use it together and share your resources and maybe use it deeper. So it's just a way to get you all in the same room together and make this happen. Some of the features that are underutilized um, are the BBC videos that they just added. There's a bunch of wonderful science and history videos that you need to take a peek at. They're great. And they're like, this one's only about six minutes long. So it it's a good way to provide research for your kids, depending on what you're teaching. The FET simulations. I'm not sure that a lot of people are using that, but they are really awesome to teach math and science skills. This one, I believe, when you play with it, you as the teacher need to play with it, um, will teach you about kinetic and potential energy and thermal, I guess, too. You put them at the top and you see the graph changing. So this is a good discussion starter. Inside a Nearpod, another underutilized um, object in Nearpod are the sways. There's libraries of sways that have been there, and I don't know if you've taken a look at what they can offer. And then also all these fun features that are pretty interactive that will keep the kids interested. Also the click and drag. Um, the click and drag activity, the kids stayed really engaged, so it's a good thing to throw in the middle of some of your slides. If you're only just putting um, PowerPoints into Nearpod, maybe throw in a fill in the blank to keep the engagement up. Have you app smashed? So another part of this building in Nearpod session, we'll be talking about the apps you can put inside Nearpod or the sites you can put there to make it more engaging and use it deeper. First, I have Flipgrid. Have you looked at Flipgrid? It's wonderful. So you don't even have to make your own Flipgrid. You can use something someone else did. This is a primary one, and it's teachers from around the world are having their kids add a video where they report the weather from where they are. All the kid has to do is click plus on their device, no matter hey, if it is an iPad or a computer, and they can click record and report the weather. I like this feature too, where you add a sticky note and they can write down the words they wanted to say while looking at the screen and post it and then come back and check it later to see what the weather's like in Ohio or the Bahamas or wherever. So that's a fun feature. If you embedded a flip grid inside your Nearpod, imagine the fun the kids would have. Also, have you played on quizzes? Quizzes is like a hoot, but cooler. It says, enter this code on the next screen. All I did was put a website called join.quizzes.com. I enter the code and then put my name in and I join the game. It picks my little character for me. And I begin. I like quizzes for things that you want the students to be a little bit more automatic at, like um, math facts once they've understood the uh, reason, you know, understood the thinking behind it. That's correct. So it has wonderful memes that keep the kids engaged as they answer each of the questions. And if they get it wrong, it has memes for that too, you see. So quizzes is another one that you might want to smash into your Nearpod. There'll be tons of suggestions at the Building a Nearpod session, so certainly come out. It's only two hours, and you'll learn a lot of good stuff, and you'll collaborate with a lot of smart people.